och svenska för att försöka på mitt eget modersmål presentera den särskilda värmen man känner när man åker till Finland. Det är någonting alldeles speciellt. Jag vet inte hur många av er som känner till det som inte är svenska, men vi känner någonting alldeles speciellt varmt för Finland av olika skäl. Historiska varmen. Det är också därför som det finns något land i världen som vi heller vill slå i olika idrotter som till exempel ishockey eller så. Och det beror på att vi tycker så mycket om det. Vi hoppas att ni ska tycka att vi är duktiga i Sverige förstås. I will now switch to English. I uh, just said that I was proud to be here and there is a special war between Sweden and Finland. And uh, this is not the least on, on the professional arena from which I talk, which is uh, sustainability. This whole conference has been about solutions. Uh, solutions within traffic systems, uh, energy, uh, waste management, uh, education, water management, and so forth. And that is precisely what this is all about, finding the solutions. I will speak about one missing element in this. How do we bring all those sectors together into a joint effort to sustainability? Because there is not one chance, there is no chance at all. For individual attempts within water, traffic, energy, education and other efforts to bring us to sustainability. There's not one chance at all in a complex system like the world, in a complex endeavor like sustainable development, that various ad hoc, piecemeal attempts in different sectors will bring us to sustainability. It cannot happen due to complexity. We need joint venture. How can we put those various sectors and aspects into a picture that together is sustainable. That is the question. And that is mainly an issue about competence, not values. How can we do it? Because all values will be killed if we don't manage to do it. I will speak to three things here. First of all, why? Why is of obvious, we want to survive together on the planet. But I want to shorten that a bit. Why is this good for the individual player? If only all or Turkey would do this, why would it be good for Turkey to do it alone? Until, of course, the sad dead end yeah, when the world goes under. If you are alone, it will all go down the journey, or even Turkey. But on that journey, you will still be winners until the bitter end. You need to understand it on that level. The second issue is what? What is sustainability? How can we define it such that it embraces water and traffic and energy and all the other things into joint ventures? And the next thing is how can we run such processes? And this requires a framework. And there is only one framework in the world that has attempted to bring it all together like that. And it has been derived during a 21-year consensus period. First, we begin with the what. If you look at this challenge, it is dynamic. Things get worse and worse and worse and worse as long as the world is not sustainable. We lose more and more forests, more and more cropland, more and more water tables, more and more diversity. Greenhouse gases get higher and higher, we get more and more people on Earth, and so forth. So per capita, we are moving deeper and deeper into a funnel of declining resource potential to sustain us until we reach points of no return. That's the sad story. And we all agree. There's not, not one scientist raising his hand or saying, oh no, water tables are not at an average declining. No, no, top soil layers are not gradually defined. No, no, we are not losing more and more diversity. They're not there. This is, that is not the issue. And we all know at some subconscious level that we are in this funnel together. Even more spooky is that the social system, at the time when we need it the most, also is degrading. And that is measured as loss of trust between individuals and institutions, and between individuals interpersonally. We trust each other globally less and less. At the time when we need trust more and more, 
to save not only the social system but also the ecosystem. And those two are the two commons that will determine our destiny. Now, once we understood that, which we all do, deep in our hearts, we know this. And believe me, I've been doing this for 20 years in the most aggressive, competitive American companies, and you don't get those, excuse me, that's simply not right. We are not losing any topsoil layers or forests up at the average. So that is not the problem. But it becomes even more puzzling. Because if you ask that same aggressive, competitive CEO of that American company, so what about opportunities? What do you think resources will cost as we keep losing, say, fresh lakes with robust fish stock globally? What will such lakes cost later on in this dynamic change? When there will soon be maybe 9 billion people bidding on the remainders in the system, do you think costs will go up or down? It's an insult to wait for the answer. They know that also. If you are systematically part of the problem more than your competitors, what will happen to your insurance costs, your tax, your waste management costs, your resource costs? It's an insult to wait for that as well. Deep in their hearts, they know that as well. And in fact, today, it has already happened to them. So that is a known behavior. That's not the problem. This also means that if you are alone running for sustainable development. You are alone providing more good for people. You are alone understanding how the world will change to prepare yourself for future markets. You are alone selling more values to people per resource input, per waste, per use of wasteful use of water or whatever. That's a winning position. You will win. And you will win even more further on. Well, again, you are a Titanic, of course if you are doing it alone, but you will run first class on that journey. And the others will have much more pain until the bitter end. So you don't need to go to Copenhagen at climate negotiations, trying to negotiate to be the last to leave the fossil era. That is based on a flaw, that is bad competence amongst our leaders. They don't understand the issue. It is not based on bad values. This can be explained in a couple of minutes, and you don't get resistance. We feel this is true. So what's the problem? The problem is called reductionism. It means that instead of seeing that big picture, model it, learn from it, and draw the right conclusions, we get lost in details. We are seeking knowledge, but we drown in information. <coughs> This is also visualized as all of society divided into drill holes of sectors. It's also called sectorization or compartmentalization. Borhår, där vi gräver djupare och djupare och försvinner i vår kontakt från andra. Each scientist being a nerd, going deeper and deeper down into his or her drill hole until only the feet are sticking up. And there's no contact with the level of the heads between those people. And this is also how uh, the Department for Sustainability uh, knows relatively little about what the Department of Finance are doing and why they don't understand the problems about sustainability more and so forth. We are drifting apart into subcultures. It was no different in my hospital where I was heading a cancer unit many, many years ago. Nobody understood what the others were doing. At that same hospital, I also learned that it doesn't need to be like that. Sometimes we are wonderful together. In this example, it's called the clinical conference. The clinical conference is very easy to understand. Mrs. Anderson is now going to die because she has cancer. Unless we cure her, of course. And to cure Mrs. Anderson, we need the pathologist in his or her drill hole because now we need the top performance indicators on exactly what kind of tumor it is. And we need the radiologist to understand the distribution. We need the surgeon, the medical doctor, the nurse. We need all those professionals. We need the social worker. Because all of society is now to be mobilized around Mrs. Anderson and her family and workplace 
to make her go through this tough treatment. And together we cure well above 50% of cancers. And by cure, I mean cure. So they die from something else at a high age, having lived happily ever after, cured of cancer. How can we cooperate so efficiently around this patient while failing so desperately together when it is about sustainability, which is about saving the whole world, not one patient? Why? Because we don't have a unifying framework by which we do it. We don't put water, energy, traffic and all that kind of stuff together into a joint effort. So people are sitting in the sectors fighting for their budgets and wanting more than those dealing with waste management or energy here at our traffic department. Because they don't understand the issue how to deal with it together. They don't have a clinical conference. How do those guys do it in the clinical conference? Mrs. Anderson also have a wall of funnel, closing up until she is dead, if we do this too late. So this, these experts project a healthy system ahead of them, a healthy Mrs. Anderson, cure of cancer. And in every drill hole around her, trying to save her, they have one and the same exact principle definition of cure of cancer. And they do not begin their clinical conference by arguing about that. Two principles. The last cancer cell is killed in her body in the future, but we have not killed her in the process. Two principles at the same time. This is also how we play football. There's a principle way of winning. You are putting the ball more often in the other goal than you receive it in your own. That's one principle. And the other is while sticking to the rules of the game. If you first kick down somebody, and then score, that doesn't count as a score. So there are two principles in that. And this is how we play complex games. We share everyone around it at the principle level what winning is. Otherwise, we cannot cooperate. So let me just repeat this. There is a logical flow. To be strategic, you must know the end game. In this case, you can do it. You must understand it at the principle level. That must be robust. You must not talk and negotiate. And it must cut through water, energy, and be true for all those, otherwise you cannot cooperate. You can only define a complex endeavor like that at the principle level. Nobody will know exactly all the stuff that will happen to Mrs. Anderson on her way to Cuba. We only know the principles. And then we adapt and play the game, like in chess. You don't know exactly how checkmate will look like, only that you have complied with the four principles of checkmate. Then you have one, regardless of what it looks like. So you can adapt, you can be intelligent, you can drive the game without knowing exactly how it will look like at the level of detail. 